Hi, I'm John Copeland, and we're back at Fox Valley Cart for the third in our series of 2021 Grand Prix seminars. In our first seminars, we took a look at the clutches most commonly used at Grand Prix. And today, we're going to take a look at the Yamaha KT100 engine. Like any other internal combustion engine, the Yamaha needs fuel, air, compression, and spark to run. But unlike the engine in your car or truck, it doesn't have movable valves. The piston, as it moves up and down, opens and closes ports in the cylinder wall to let fuel and air in and combustion gases out. The key to performance with these engines is making sure that everything happens at the right time. So let's take a closer look. Here on this cutaway engine, you can see all the major components. Here's the piston and ring on the connecting rod attached to the crankshaft. Here's the cylinder, the cylinder head, and the carburetor. If you look closely, you can see the line between the cast iron cylinder liner and the finned aluminum portion of the cylinder. It's important to remember that everything that happens in the engine has to do with changing pressures from the outside air to the crankcase, from the crankcase to the combustion chamber, and from the combustion chamber out. So you remember that we said that the piston acts as a valve in these engines. So starting at top dead center, as the piston goes down, the bottom of the piston closes off the intake, intake track from the carburetor, the intake port. Now everything below the piston is a closed system. And as the piston continues to move down, it compresses that mixture in the crankcase. It, as the piston continues to move down, it uncovers the transfer ports. There's one on each side. And the compressed fuel and air mixture flows from the crankcase through the transfer ports up on top of the piston. Once the piston reaches bottom dead center, it begins moving back up, first closing off the transfer ports. Now the area below the piston is a closed system again, and as the piston begins continues to move up, the pressure in the crankcase goes down. Once the, once the piston closes the exhaust port, it begins to compress the mixture on top of the piston. As the piston approaches top dead center, the bottom of the piston opens the, the intake port and the low pressure in the crankcase sucks fuel and air in through the carburetor. A few degrees before top dead center, the spark plug fires, ignites the compressed mixture in the combustion chamber, momentum carries the crankshaft through the top dead center and the expanding gases drive the piston down to repeat the cycle. Finally, as the top of the piston clears the exhaust port, the exhaust gases exit the cylinder and go out into the exhaust system. It's important to know that while there are lots of things we can do to change and improve the Yamaha's performance, Grand Prix follows the same rules for those engines as every other sanctioning body in the country. Port timing, compression, carburetor size, and virtually every other dimension of the engine are carefully controlled. All those dimensions are measured at post-qualifying and post-race tech inspection. Like any good engine builder, we measure and adjust each of those dimensions when we build a new engine or rebuild an existing one. We want to get your engine as close to the limit of the rules as possible without making it illegal. A quick word about blueprinting. Blueprinting is the process of taking an engine and remachining things within the rules to take all the manufacturing tolerances out. These Yamaha engines are mass produced and they're not as perfect as we would like them to be, but we can remachine some things to make them better, all within the rules. So we remachine the crankcases to make sure the bearings are perfectly aligned and have the optimal clearance. Then we replace the cheap factory bearings with higher precision, freer running bearings. Same with the crankshaft seals. We disassemble the crankshaft, straighten and clearance the connecting rod, and reassemble using higher quality bearings. 
we reassemble the crankshaft and align it to one ten thousandth of an inch alignment. We completely recut the cylinder head to get the maximum allowable compression. The carburetor gets the same treatment. All this work is aimed at reducing the internal drag of the engine. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Out of the box, the engine makes 11 or 12 horsepower. By the time we're done with it, it makes 16 to 17 horsepower. You can see why an unblueprinted engine isn't going to be competitive against a blueprinted one. It's important to know that the engine only needs to be blueprinted once. If it's done properly, there's no need to remachine it. Once it's blueprinted, it should be good for the life of the engine. Now let's talk about the exhaust system. The exhaust system on your cart plays a vital role in how the engine performs. Having the right pipe for the track you're running on and having it properly adjusted can play a huge role in how fast you are. So let's take a closer look. Over the years, there have been literally hundreds of pipes designed and built for two cycle engines. They were all designed with particular theories and specific performance goals. The most recent development for tracks like the Grand Prix track is the RLV L series. Here's, there's the des designation here that shows this is an L2. This is a pipe for short tracks. The L4 is for long tracks and the L3 is a compromise between the two. And here's what the pipe looks like inside. As you can see here, there is a diverging cone, a shorter converging cone, and then these two cans that help quiet the exhaust noise. In terms of performance, these cones are all that really matter. When the piston opens the exhaust port in the cylinder, there's a shock wave that travels at the speed of sound given the temperature and density of the exhaust gas. The actual exhaust gas travels much slower on the order of 250 miles an hour, but the shock wave is the important part. You all know that every high pressure wave is followed by a corresponding low pressure wave. Immediately after the exhaust port opens and sends that shock wave down the pipe, the transfer ports open and the fresh fuel air mixture goes into the cylinder. The low pressure that follows the high pressure wave actually sucks some of that unburned mixture out into the header and into the exhaust system. While all that's going on, the shock wave is being amplified by the diverging cone, then reflected back by the converging cone. All the while, the piston continues its path down, then back up the cylinder. If everything is timed right, that returning shock wave stuffs the unburned mixture from the header back into the cylinder before the exhaust port closes. If you could freeze the engine just at the moment the exhaust port closes, you'd find that you already have higher than atmospheric pressure above the piston, even before physical compression begins. This is a huge performance advantage, but there's one important detail. The amount of time it takes the shock wave to go down the pipe and back is fixed based on the length of its that it has to travel, while the amount of time that the exhaust port is open before it closes again changes with RPM. That's where the connector pipe comes in. It has to be exactly the right length to give you the best performance in your desired operating RPM range. Generally at Grand Prix, you're going to be between 10,200 RPM and 10,300 where the clutch engages and somewhere between 14,000 and 14,000 RPM at the end of the straightaway. The longer the connector, the longer it takes the shockwave to get back and the better the engine will perform at low RPMs, where the shorter the connector is, the sooner the shockwave gets back and this is better for, for higher RPM. If you're using an L2 pipe, you'll want the connector to be at the right length to give you seven and a half inches from the face of the piston to the end of the connector. You measure it like this. Put something in until it touches the piston and then measure it and you want it to be seven and a half inches. If you want to experiment, 
you can make additional connectors to try at seven and a quarter or even seven inches or longer at seven and three quarters or eight inches. You can get scraps of inch and three quarter muffler tubing from any muffler shop for free and cut them yourself. Don't forget to deburr the edges and wipe any metal filings out before you use them. The best way to judge if you've got the pipe adjusted correctly is with a stopwatch. But here's another way to do it. If you come off the corner and the cart pulls really well off the corner, but then the acceleration starts to die off down the straightaway, the pipe is probably too long. If, on the other hand, you come off the corner sort of sluggish and partway down the straightaway the engine takes off, the pipe's probably too short. But in either case, this is a, a great way you can experiment to get the best performance out of your engine. Finally, let's talk about the service life of the engine and maintenance. When we rebuild an engine or build a new one, we set the clearance between the piston and the cylinder wall at about two thousandths of an inch. That gives us the best compression and heat transfer. The service life of the piston is about four to five running hours before it needs to be rebuilt. If you carefully measure a new piston, you'll find that it's not round and the sides aren't straight. The piston is actually egg-shaped, bigger on the intake side than on the exhaust. That's because the exhaust side gets hotter and expands more. Also, the top of the piston is smaller than the bottom. That's because the top gets hotter and expands more. The idea is for the piston to be round and straight when it gets to running temperature. But as the piston wears, that taper wears away and the piston begins to rattle in the cylinder. That rattle is lost energy that never gets to the crankshaft and eventually the piston skirt may fracture and that makes a real mess inside the engine. Four to five running hours is about all you want on a piston. The optimal life on the main bearings, seals, and bottom rod bearings is about eight to 10 running hours. So about every other time you get a new piston and ring, you should get a complete rebuild. Engine output is limited by internal drag and other energy consumption. Bearing drag, ignition rotor drag, piston rattle, and other factors. Those drag factors go up with the square of RPM as do the drag factors from the cart, axle bearings, wheel bearings, brake drag, and drag from the tires. So at some point, the line of the cumulative drag crosses the torque output line. At that point, the cart will not go any faster. So the point of all this is that reducing friction and drag are critical to on-track performance. Whether it's in the engine or on the cart, friction and drag are the enemies of high performance. Next time we'll look at the Yamaha carburetor, how to maintain it, and how to adjust it for maximum performance. In the meantime, don't forget to share this video with your Grand Prix fans. Send us any comments you have. If you have questions or you know something that you, we can do to make these better, please let us know. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. See you next time.